Welcome back to Kinetics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we discussed how to perform the steady state approximation calculations and its assumptions. In this video, we're gonna do a very similar technique that's not as widely used, but it's still important to be able to do. It is called the pre-equilibrium approximation. And if you notice from the previous video, we had this equation right here, this chemical reaction sequence. We're gonna be using the same one, and we're gonna use this assumption, this set of mechanisms to be able to derive a similar expression to what we saw before. What the pre-equilibrium approximation assumes is that A and B form an equilibrium with C before any C is actually converted to D, okay? So remember our equation. We have A plus B, our reactants or substrates, are in equilibrium with C through the rate constants K1 and K minus 1 for the reverse reaction. And then C can be consumed in a one-way reaction to the product D through this rate constant K2. Now, like I said, in the pre-equilibrium approximation, we assume that there's an equilibrium established between A and B and C before any C is consumed to form the product D. Okay, that's the key assumption, all right? And so if we assume there's a prior equilibrium, it would make sense to use an equilibrium constant. These are, remember, things we saw back in physical chemistry one in the first half of the course when we talked about Gibbs free energy, solution chemistry, all that stuff. Now, what would be the equilibrium expression for this first reaction, this equilibrium? Well, we'd have the product on the top, the numerator, concentration of C, divided by the concentration of A, divided by the concentration of B. That's one way to express this equilibrium constant. One other thing that's very important to remember is the equilibrium constant is actually a ratio of the rate constants between the forward and reverse reactions. So I could also express the equilibrium constant, K, a big K, as the rate constant of the forward reaction, K1, divided by the rate constant of the reverse reaction, K minus one. That's very important to remember. Because what I can do is I can, I can rearrange this expression in some way. Now the question is, how do I rearrange it? Well, remember back in the steady state approximation, when we talked about how we wanted to solve for the concentration of the intermediate, which in this case was C, right? We're actually going to do the same thing here. We want to find what our intermediate is, which is going to be C, and that's because C is both consumed by K2 and formed by K1. So that makes C an intermediate. So we want to solve for the concentration of C using this information right here. Well, all I would have to do is multiply both sides by the concentrations of A and B. And what I get is the concentration of C is K1 divided by K minus one times the concentration of A times the concentration of B. Now, how do I express the total rate of this reaction, which is going to be assumed to be the rate of formation of the product D? Well, the rate is just the rate of change of the concentration of D with respect to time. And that's going to be, we use K2, the rate constant, times the reactant of that particular reaction, which is concentration of C. That's also pretty handy because we just found an expression for the concentration of C. So I'm going to take all this and just plug it in for concentration of C. So my rate of the formation of D with respect to time is K2 times K1 divided by K minus one times A times B. And usually you won't see this, although it, it, it is something you should be aware of. Sometimes you can back substitute this ratio of K1 and K minus one with K, the equilibrium constant. This would also be correct uh, to put, but generally most rational and reasonable professors are okay if you just leave it like this. All right, now to really conclude this video, let's actually look at something. We previously derived the expression for the rate of the formation of D using steady state approximation, and now we and that had different assumptions than that of the pre-equilibrium approximation. So let's look, are there any differences in these equations? So notice with the steady state approximation, we have a slightly more complicated denominator. We have K minus one plus K two. In the pre-equilibrium approximation rate, we only have this k minus one in the denominator, okay? So the steady state approximation takes into account 
the fact that equilibrium may not be established prior to the consumption of C to form D. And so it has to take into account the fact that there is some consumption of C prior to equilibrium, which is why you see this K2 in the denominator expression for steady state approximation. Uh, basically, because we assume equilibrium established in the pre-equilibrium approximation prior to the consumption of C to form D, that's why you don't see this added K2 in the denominator here for that expression. Okay, now remember the pre-equilibrium approximation is not as widely used as steady state approximation. In fact, we would see that steady state approximation is used in the development of the Michaelis-Menten equation for enzyme kinetics. It's used in the Lindemann mechanism, which we're actually going to cover in the next video, and then also for if we want to do kinetics of branched reactions like this. Okay, so you need to be able to do pre-equilibrium approximation, but if there's one that you really should be able to do for all the derivations past this, you should understand the steady state approximation. All right, so hopefully this video made sense. Hopefully you learned something. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. And in the next video, we're going to cover the Lindemann mechanism and how to derive it.